Hello David and all your lovely children and grandchildren. This is Nana and Granddad. 2021. We love you. We will love you forever. We love you and we look forward to mixing with you and being with you. And all the future generations. This is a record that, you know, we had people like us who cared for you deeply, loved you deeply and will always love you deeply. David is our eldest grandson and we love him dearly. He's a good boy and I'm glad that he's found somebody to love and hope that their life together will be absolute bliss and they'll always be happy. Because if David loves Danny, we love Danny. So lots of love to them both. We love you both. <laughs> she said the last word. She says everything I'm thinking of, which is absolutely wonderful. We're is so it? proud of him. Yep, absolutely.
So thank you very much, David. Well done and lots and lots of luck and long life to both of you. Thank you. You do have the booklets on the tables for those who would like to follow or join in. You're more than welcome to. And this evening, the painting will be led for us by Samantha and Charles. Amalo Bashuv Adonai, Et Shabbat Zion Ha'im Kavomim, Az Yamal Esafo Pidu, Ul Shonei Durina, Az Yom Ruvadoyim, Hittil Adonai Lasotim Eile, Hittil Adonai Lasotim Anu Ha'inu Samechim, Shuv Adonai Et Shuviteinu Kapikim Banegev, Hazorim Bedima, Lerina Yisoru, Halom Yelehu Bako, Nosem Meshef Hazaram, Bo Yavo Lerina Nosem Halumosa.
Ha-rachamani-lachalene-lelam-ba-ed <laughs> Rahman, he read it. Can Oh, yeah, how long have I been? My Yeshua, my God, you're the best in the world. The David of Zahara, I'd love to tell you, but most of the time, I'm wrong. My God, you're the best in the world. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. to the repetition of the Sheva Bocha, the seven wedding blessings, which were first given to the bride and groom when they stood up at the Chubba this afternoon. And we're starting the Sheva Bocha this evening, Mr. Henry Gordon. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGavdem Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehakol Bara Litvodo Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Yotze Hadam Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Yatsa Et HaAdam Betzalmo Betzelem Dumut Tavnito Behitkin no mi menu began aden adeyad baruch ata adonai yotze hadam sos tasis betogel hakara the kibutz banek ol toka besimcha baruch ata adonai masamei tziyon bebanecha amen samei ata samach reim ha'avim kesamecha chayet zircha began aden mikedem. Baruch Atah Adonai, Masameach Atan Bechalam. 
Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam. Asher baras asom v'simcha, chatzam v'kala. Asher baras asom v'simcha, chatzam v'kala. Gila rina, ditza v'chedva. Ahava v'yachava v'shalom v'reut. Rin gila rina, ditza v'chedva. Ahava v'yachava v'shalom v'reut. Mehero Adonai Eloheinu Yisoma Ba'ari Yehuda Uvachutzot Yerushalayim Kol Sasom Bekol Tzimcha Kol Chatan Bekol Kala Kol Sasom Bekol Tzimcha Kol Chatan Bekol Kala Kol Mitzralot Tachanim mechuvatam unarim mimishte naginatam Baruch ata Adonai masameach atam im hakalam Back from that one to the other two. Half each back in. Then you've mixed it. Doesn't matter. Half, half, half. Brilliant. That's it. Then you've mixed the two together. All right, completely. Well done. Okay. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, time now for this evening's speeches, which we really hope you'll enjoy. First of all, a big round of applause, please, for our first speaker, the bridegroom's best man, Denzel. Groomsmen, uh, you're all looking dashing. You all deserve to be headhunted by Hugo Boss. Uh, Gillian, uh, David, Samantha, and Paul, you've all done an amazing job tonight. And it's, you know, it's really nice to be part of this. Bridesmaids, where are you? There you are, yeah. Uh, you look gorgeous tonight, and you're only outshone by our lovely bride, Dan. Gentlemen, I'm sure you'll agree that's a sad day today as another beautiful woman has come off the availability list. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, I'm sure you agree. Uh, you know, after today, not really much has changed. <laughs> <laughs> now, before I was right, uh, when I was writing this, I was told by Gillian, you know, not to include anything explicit. No drugs, no inappropriate stuff, no, you know, anything like that, nothing at all, right? So, to be honest with you, that might be a good thing. Uh, you know, most best man speeches just consist of, you know, roasting your best friend, roasting the man, roasting the brood, and just embarrassing in front of all his friends and family. I'm not gonna do that today. Instead, I'm just gonna talk to uh, you guys all about, you know, the good qualities about David. Uh, like, um, uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, now, Danny, uh, can you look in David's eyes, please? David, can you look at uh, your beautiful wife? Now, guys, there comes a time in everyone's life where they meet their soulmate. You know, the one they can trust and rely on, you know? The one that they know that they always have their back. Now, for David, that came 20 years ago when he met me. <laughs> <laughs> I was his first. <laughs> I'm not going to do a long speech about how we all met because I'm not getting paid tonight. But <laughs> if you do want the extended speech, it's by a kiosk by the front door. <laughs> now, the first time David and I met, uh, David and I met was at Southcombe Preparatory School when we were four, four or five years old. Four years old. 
Um, you know, obviously we didn't run in the same circles, but the brotherhood was blooming. <laughs> we shared a lot of common, we shared a lot of common during our high school years at St. Columbus College. A love for 90s music, an interest in sci-fi and fantasy, a number of bad haircuts, and, it, and even the same bully. <laughs> of course, as we grew up, personalities grew with us. And, you know, me keeping myself humble and aiming to keep my grades up, whilst David grooming himself as the next James Bond. <laughs> uh, the thing is, as you grow up with someone, you, you tend to learn a number of things. You know, the things they like, the things they don't like and the things they can't do without. Now David, I love you bro, but you have a very obsessive personality. <laughs> Let me give you an example. So, we encouraged David to go to the gym. Now he goes nearly every day. We took him to a miniature store month, months later. David's collecting plastic models worth of the holiday in Cancun. <laughs> we discovered, uh, we went to a place called Forbidden Planet, Two years later, David buys a ninja sword. <laughs> but the thing that always cracked me up, which is a story I have to tell, because if I don't, then I, I regret it for the rest of my life, is David's funny uh, ability to, you know, save money and be cheap sometimes. You know, <laughs> you cheap, but, you know. Right, so basically, we're going to Vietnam. And on our journey, David's like, yeah, dance, you know, I'll leave you to, um, you know, sort out. So I'll, I'll sort out all the flights and I'll sort out all the bookings and everything. Don't worry, dance, oh, I got this, I got this, right? So he booked all the flights. It's a 14 hour flight. And then, you know, so normally people just do the straight route, they don't do it. But we decided because David said, I've got a bargain, mate. He said, leave it to me, we're going to stop in Thailand and we're going to go there. What he didn't tell me was that. There was three minutes between the wheels touching the runway of the plane and the next plane we had to get. <laughs> Didn't tell me that, bro. So we were whole assing through Thailand trying to get to our plane. <laughs> but that doesn't end there, right? So when we got on the plane, everything's fine. You know, we're all booked in, everything's fine. Got bags, everything feels good, you know, everything's fine. Um, about two hours into the flight, I got, uh, one of the flight attendants spilled all his noodles on me. Spilled my, all my dinner, everything. Do you remember that? Yeah. Remember yeah. That. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get another meal. You want to know why? Because we had to pay for another one. <laughs> Wasn't including the ticket price. <laughs> so yeah. But hey, uh, and on to our beautiful bride. When I first met Danny, I was very fond of her because she was such a lovely, bubbly human being, so easygoing, and you know, just a lovely compliment to David. Actually, a funny story is the first time we met, Danny slipped and fell into a puddle of mud. <laughs> <laughs> she was so embarrassed. <laughs> but growing up, you know, you can see them both grow together, love each other, you know, enjoy each other's company, and both build on a foundation of love and stability. Now today you've both taken the first huge step on your journey as husband and wife, right? So basically, Danny, you've gained a beautiful husband, two new parents, and two lovely sisters. David, you've gained another pair of parents, two lovely sisters, a brother, and because Jillian, a reason to never slack off. <laughs> <laughs> now, in marriage, right, um, basically it's like a pack of cards, I've been told, you know, it's two hearts, you know, bonded by a diamond, right? Now, I know you're smiling, right? But give it a few years and you'll both be reaching for a club and a spade. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, take care of yourselves, yeah? Just remember, you're in this for the long haul. You know, this isn't a rush, you don't have to rush anything. Take time with each other, get to know each other. You know, you've done most of the work now, but you're just starting still, right? Remember three things, yeah? Three main things. Patience, perseverance, and passion, yeah? But patience, what I mean is, when you're in an argument, as Danny Stout said, when you're in an argument, just relax, take it easy, remember why you fell in love. David, just say yes. <laughs> just say it. You don't know everything, man. My wife will tell you, just say it. <laughs> just keep your mouth shut. 
execution, yeah? yeah? And two, perseverance, yeah? And this is talking about, you know, when you've had those long days and you just can't be asked dealing with, you know, something. You want to go 12 rounds with each other, just like Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali, yeah? Just, just bear with it, go with the flow, work on yourselves and work together, right? Your allies, not adversaries. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is passion, right? That's when you've had a good day and you want to go 12 rounds with each other. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> uh, all jokes aside, um, I just want to say how proud we all are to see you, to look, you know, seeing you so happy, seeing what you've done. You fused so many people together today. You've honestly smashed it. You all look lovely and we're just all waiting to see your lovely journey as you grow together. So I just want a huge round of applause and a toast to the happy couple. Now welcome the bridegroom, David. Hello everyone. Hey, there we go. I know I speak for both Danny and I when I say it's an absolute delight to be here with everyone today. After almost two years without events, it's hard to describe just how special it is to spend the happiest day of our lives with so many of those who are closest to us. Today really wouldn't be the same without each and every one of you here. <laughs> Before I begin, I must give thanks to a man that nobody here has ever heard of. Someone who has done more than anyone else to make sure that the next few minutes go as smoothly as possible. About four years ago, a man called Brian Williams uploads a rather well-paced groom speech to the internet. Without his wonderful framework, the next few minutes would be a lot more painful to all of us. So thank you, Brian. <laughs> Let me start properly by saying thank you, Tony, for your kind and considerate words earlier. From the moment Danny introduced me to you, Gillian, Samantha and Francesca, you have all been incredibly welcoming. You have fully supported our relationship and everything that it entails, and we can always trust that you'll look out for us both, guiding us in religious life and lending an ear to anything on our mind. I feel truly blessed to be welcomed in such a close-knit family. After all, parents able to raise a girl as perfect as Daniela must be doing something right. For all your past help, for everything to come, thank you. I really couldn't have asked for better in-laws. With all the rushing around today, it's hard to forget just how much work goes into planning a wedding. For me, I get to arrive today with all the organisation and hard work done. In some cases, long before I proposed. <laughs> <laughs> this wedding couldn't be more magical, and that is in no small part thanks to the unbelievable work put in by Gillian and Tony. You have really outdone yourselves today. It'd be remiss of me not to mention the very people who make me who I am, mum and dad. Every day I catch myself saying or doing something that's an echo of yourselves, and I couldn't be more grateful to have both of you helping me grow. Every bad pun Danny's forced to suffer through is thanks to dad, and any cheese board she has to watch me is thanks to mum. Fortunately, I've also picked up your deep care of others and your calm approach to the chaos of life. It's something that I'm sure will serve me very well in my future with Danny. You continue to selflessly guide and care for me, all whilst ensuring that I can tackle any problem I face head on. It's thanks to you both that I'm even worthy of marriage in the first place. I cannot thank you enough for all you've done for me, both today and in every action you have done to make me, me. I've been so lucky to grow alongside you both and to call you not just my parents, but my friends. Growing up, very few people get to experience quite as much quality time with myself as my sisters. Lissy and Lottie, there aren't many people who are as consistently funny and sarcastic as yourselves. You're always great to be around and have always been there to offer advice. <coughs> Most importantly, you may have been the biggest help in finding my future bride, as you showed me everything I wanted to avoid in finding a professional partner. <laughs> of course, I kid. You've both been nothing but supportive, kind, and an integral part of my life. One of the best parts about coming home is that I get to spend time with you both. There are four people here today that have made it extra special. My grandparents. Grandma and Papa, 
Nana and Grandad, you have been so blessed to be able to have you all here with us today, sharing the most important day of my life thus far. You've both been such wonderful models for love, devotion and married life. I hope Danny and I can follow in your footsteps and learn all of your secrets to a successful married life. Now, most grooms get to say they're marrying their best friend. Unfortunately for me, Denzel got married last year. <laughs> <laughs> However, I think I did one better, as good things come in small sizes. <laughs> Danny, words can't describe how much you mean to me. You've made my life immeasurably brighter, and I couldn't ask for a better partner to spend my days with. It's all the little moments of holding hands, glances, in-jokes, and giddy smiles each and every day that fill me with a happiness I never knew I could have. You make me excited about everything our future holds. No, sorry. <laughs> there we go. I didn't need this to do. I could advise. Today you look stunning. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. You look beautiful every day. You look beautiful when you're lying in bed, and you look beautiful when you're dressed just from the waist up to look presentable for a Zoom call. But today is something special. <laughs> for those who don't know, Danny and I met on a dating app called Hinge, an app with a lofty claim of helping you find your other half. Somehow, of all the 23 to 30 year old women living in North London, Danny's cheerful self popped up immediately. And with a profile so full of holiday pics and Disney quotes, how could I say no? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exactly known for keeping quiet, and thankfully Danny is a fantastic listener. It was in these early days that I got to know the kindest, most affectionate, and caring woman that I'd ever met. Also, easily the most organized, there wasn't a single part of her life that wasn't alphabetized, documented, and put in its correct place. It was clear to me that one day I'd love to either call her my wife or my personal assistant. <laughs> it's with pure joy that I get to call her both today. <laughs> when I look at Danny, I get an overwhelming feeling that everything is going to be just right. That in my wildest dreams, I'd never have thought I'd find someone as wonderful as her. I never used to believe in the idea of soulmates, but after meeting Danny, I've certainly changed my mind. So. So, with all that said, can we please raise our glasses to a woman whose enthusiasm for life is matched only by her love of holidays <laughs> and the most incredible person I have ever met, my now wife, Daniela. <laughs> my now wife, Daniela. <laughs> you. Thanks again to each and every one of you. Having you all here has really made today perfect. Well done. I think it was a great speech. Give him another round of applause, please. And I'm absolutely delighted to say, ladies and gentlemen, we will hear a few words from our beautiful.